من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد أيها الناس فإن أصدق الكلام كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون O oh, you who have attained faith, be God conscious. Be Allah conscious. Have awe and reverence in your hearts for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that is worthy of who He is and worthy of what He gives, worthy of His sublime beauty and majesty, worthy of His perfection. Worthy of his essence and worthy of his favors and grace and bounties and love and merciful love. And do that in a way that shall always keep us aware of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of his expression in his creation of his rahma, of his loving mercy or merciful love is that he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we must know and we ought to know and many know, that he sent amongst us messengers to remind us, to help us, to extract the best that is inside of us, to extract the fitra, the beautiful potential inside of us into reality. Most importantly of all of those, he sent his seal, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahibi wa sallam. He sent the seal of all of those messengers, Muhammadun, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahibi wa sallam, as he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, said that he sent him as a rahmah to the world, as a, an expression of the divine, merciful love to the worlds. He was a gift from the divine to the world of rahmah, of merciful love, of loving mercy. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And these days, this month, the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, these are days and a month during which we, in an extra way, in a special way, even more than on other days, we celebrate him sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam we remember him we are rejoicing and we are happy that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given to the world as an expression of divine merciful love and for that we are happy and we shall continue to be happy and we shall strive to be happy 
the sense of noble happiness, the sense of spiritual happiness, the sense of righteous happiness, not base and low expressions of violent joy, but a sense of noble and spiritual happiness. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ As Allah says, فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ says Allah Azza wa Jal, that we should instead rejoice in the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has expressed his favors and grace upon us and his rahmah and his merciful love and the best of that expression is Sayyiduna Mawlana Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam as he said of himself innama ana rahmatun muhdah I verily am but an expression gifted of merciful love or of loving mercy. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. He has been in the divine knowledge and in the divine will always like that. Even before, and listen to this, even before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him into this world, in the other realm of creation, in the realm of the malakut, in the realm of the souls and beyond, that which we have no definitive knowledge of the laws that govern it. He was asked by a companion one day, in this hadith related by many ulama, related by the companion Maysaratul Fakhr, rahimahullah ta'ala, that he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Mata kunta nabiya? When were you a nabi? When were you a nabi? Nabi is loosely translated in English as prophet. That's another discourse. That's not a good translation of the word nabi. Mata kunta nabiya? When were you this special, exalted, human being chosen by God, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that hadith, some of it is related in, in other texts as well that are authentic. This one is related by Abu al-Hussein uh, uh, ibn al-Faraj rahimahullah ta'ala ibn al-Jawzi relates it as well and others and the likes of ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala and others say this is a text that explains other texts. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he answered, Lama Khalaq Allahu Al Ard Wastawa il as Sama if a sawa hunna Saba Samawat wa Khalaq al Arsh Kataba ala Sakil Arshi Muhammadur Rasulullah Khatamul Ambiya Wa Khalaq al Janata Leti Askanaha Adama wa Hawa Fakataba على أبوابها وأوراقها وقبابها وخيامها كتب اسمي عليها كتب اسمي على أبوابها وأوراقها وقبابها وخيامها وآدم بين الروح والجسد وآدم بين الروح والجسد this part first. He answered Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when God Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when Allah created earth and turned towards the heavens and fashioned them seven heavens. And he created his own throne Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala without any anthropomorphic insinuation without any envisioning of a spatial temporal picture of a throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's beyond all of that. And beyond even causality. When he created Al Arsh, the throne, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wrote upon its leg of the throne again, in inverted commas, all of those are words describing that which is beyond of the beyond. He inscribed on that throne, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, the Messenger of God. Khatamul Anbiya. 
and the seal of all the Nabiyin, of all the Anbiya, loosely translated as prophets, as I said. Khatamul Anbiya. And when and he created Jannah, paradise, which he made the abode of Adam and his wife, Hawa, alayhim as -salam. And he inscribed my name in that paradise, in that Jannah, on every <coughs> gate in that paradise, on every leaf in that paradise, on every dome in that paradise, on every tent in that paradise. And Adam was still between body and soul. Adam still between soul and body, not fashioned yet. Adam between the soul and the body. فلما أحياه الله and then it says the next thing فلما أحياه الله نظر إلى العرش فرأى اسمي فأخبره الله تعالى أنه سيد ولدك فأخبره الله تعالى أنه سيد ولدك فلما غرهم الشيطان تابا واستشفع باسمي إليه end of quote and then when Allah Azza wa Jal fashioned the human being fashioned Adam and created him Adam again in that dimension of the beyond had a look a look at the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saw then my name and Allah Azza wa Jal and God informed him that that name is the Sayyid amongst all your children, is the Sayyid of all your offsprings. And when Shaytan deluded both of them, and they both repented, they implored Allah by my name to forgive them. And of quote, as related by our earliest of scholars, rahimahumullah ta'ala, like Ibn al-Jawzi and like uh, al-Hakim later on, and the ulama in general say, this is a good sanad of this hadith in particular, especially when there are other hadith that lend support to this meaning, and this becomes strong of hadith as well. The point is the fadl of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. sallam. Uluwu sha'nihi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. sallam. The exalted state and station that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated Muhammad Sayyidina sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, sallam to. And that Allah Azza wa Jal made him known before he was created to the angels, to the dwellers of Jannah, to the creatures in Jannah, to the leaves, to the domes, to the tents, to the throne of the divine, as the messenger of the divine, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last of all of those messengers, and the seal of those messengers, and already then an expression of divine merciful love and loving mercy to even the father of the race of humanity and the mother of the race of humanity, Adam and Hawa. While Adam was not even created as the texts teach us. كنت نبيا وآدم بين الروح والجسد as he said صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم I was a nabi and Adam was still between soul and clay between soul and clay رسولنا صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم this he was a human being yes but not just a human being not just 
a regular human being. I am a human being, and Sayyiduna Abu Bakr is a human being, and Sayyiduna Ali is a human being, and Lalatuna Sayyidatuna Fatima is a human being. But are they, am I like them in my human being's essence? Or are they nobler? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is a bashar, is a human being, but a very most special human being. Allah's, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi had a soul. His soul and my soul are not the same souls. He is a wali of Allah. Rasulullah is the wali of Allah. And the believing men and women are awliya of Allah. Are they the same in their wilaya of Allah as Rasulullah to Allah? La wa kalla. La wa kalla. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And then he comes to this world and he's born into this world and his mother says, when I gave birth to him, a light came from within me after he came into this world. A light, a light came from within me that illuminated as far as Syria and the palaces of Sham and Busra. Indicating now his rahmah to this world. The light that he shall be sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to this world and that his light already will reach those confines of the world at that time when the only world his mother has known was the surroundings of Mecca and Medina. And that's a light that will come to the world, a nur, that even the aristocracy of the Syrians at that time, the aristocracy of whoever was governing, of the Romans and so on, that nur will reach even then, even there. And it has, by the grace and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was born, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, came into this world, as many narrations said, on his hands and on his knees, looking at the sky, in sujood and at the same time aspiring for the highest heavens, came onto this earth as a sajid, as a raqya, as one in prostration, as one in kneeling, and at the same time looking at the heavens. That's his aspirations. His look was at the heavens, his heart was at the heavens, and he was here on earth in sujood. That will be his life and his mission, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. He was born, and once his mother took him to be nursed, as was the tradition of the people then in Mecca especially, to nurture him away from Mecca, and nursing mothers would come and seek children, and nobody would take the little child, Muhammad, the little infant, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he had no father. He was an orphan. His family was not rich. Who would like to take him to nurse him because they nursed for income to help themselves? They were poor also. Until finally this woman decides, against all odds, to take him, Halima to Saadiyah. Rahimahullah ta'ala wa radhiallahu ta'ala anna to take him to nurse him. And that year the surroundings were in drought. And she was a poor woman. She had no milk. She had a son already that she was nursing and she had no milk. And the camels and the donkeys on which they rode towards Mecca and coming back to the countryside were also so meager and so weak and had no milk. Once Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taken, all the narrators agree, and it is related unanimously. It is related, I'm sorry, uh, yes, by unanimity, by tawatur, that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he 
was in her lap. And as she took him and she was coming back to her countryside, her breasts filled with milk. The animal's breasts filled with milk. The entourage and the surroundings of where she lived in the countryside started to be green. And her sheep and her goats, which could barely walk, now they graze richly and they come back filled with milk. The barakah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even as an infant after now he was born his merciful love or the merciful love of Allah azawajal, expressed now through the child in this way and to also tell you and tell the world that this will be a child, a man blessed who will bring a lot of goodness a lot of virtue, a lot of spiritual greenery and world greenery to the world. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And he grows up. And he grows up, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And his mother dies. And his grandfather dies. And he's taken in the custody of his uncle Abu Talib who takes so great care of him and takes him as a son and this little boy still around when he was about 8 years of age taken by his uncle the blessedness continues to be shown for those who observe those who can see Abu Talib is related was not a very good very, very rich man and when they have food, he makes sure that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has enough food. But they noticed that when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is with them, everybody eats well and everybody is satiated and food is left over. And when he's not with them, they can't have enough. They don't have enough. They're not satiated. They don't eat enough. So Abu Talib would say when he wants to feed his family, wait until I call my son, Muhammad, for he is Mubarak. And now we eat. And they eat and everyone is satiated. And there is leftover food even after that. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And he grows up. And he grows up. And yes, he became the elect messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of the beautiful thing I want to share with you and leave to remember continue to remember in joy and in celebration this beloved creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he was so mercifully loving he was so spiritually special that even the pebbles, inanimate objects, as we call them, inanimate objects, pebbles, when in the palm of his hand, they are in joy. They are rejoicing, rejoicing, and so rejoicing that they are in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal allowed in a way that some humans could even hear that as related in authentic hadith sabahat al hasa fi rahatayhi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wasallam pebbles were heard by the companions in dhikr in tasbih of allah azza wa jal in celebration and glorification of allah of the divine in the palms of his hands because when they were in the palms of his hand they were so in such a natural, their most natural environment. Their most natural environment. And God tells us that everything is in dhikr of Allah, جل, isn't it? Didn't He tell us that in the Quran? Everything is in dhikr of Allah, جل, but we don't sense that. We don't understand that. But this karama for Rasulullah. This karama for the companions 
is that they were made now actually to sense and to hear the vicar of inanimate objects when in the palm of his hand. This is that Nabi. He was a man, but not just a man, in that sense. Men to sabbihul hasa fi yaday. Who, as a regular human being, would have pebbles heard aloud in their natural dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not only that, animals know that he is the expression of divine compassion and love and mercy on this earth, they complain to him about the harshness of human beings. A bird comes flying around in the masjid, flying around, around. This is another hadith sahih. And Rasulullah understood and read the message of the bird and it was a mother bird. And he said, who terrorized this mother bird by taking away from her her fledglings? Ruddu ilayha waladaha. Give her back her fledglings. The bird knew where to complain to. Why have you terrorized the mother bird by taking her child? Oh, what a lesson about human beings and the terror of human beings towards each other and towards, of course, the other world. Hear him say, who terrorized this human mother by hurting her child? He was the source and refuge for Rahmah into this world صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه طوبى للمستغفرين Seek the forgiveness of Allah What an excellent abode awaits those who sincerely seek forgiveness from Allah أستغفر الله العظيم وأتوب إليه والحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله على عباده الذين اصطفى and even after he has died صلى الله عليه وسلم and his death is another special death in the barzakh in which he is in that existence in which he is after death and as the barzakh realm he is living as he صلى الله عليه وسلم told us and the anbiya and the other anbiya are in a living state of barzakh alayhim salawatullahi wa salamuh and his is a most special one and in that he said sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam his merciful love his loving mercy continues especially for his ummah and he says hayati khayrul lakum wa mamati khayrul lakum as many ulama related and authenticated this hadith, early experts of hadith, rahimahumullah ta'ala. My living is good for you, and my dying is good for you. Ya Allah, Ya Rasulullah, your, your dying is good for us. How? Can't stand that. My living is good for you, tuhdithuna fayuhdathu lakum. My living is good for you as long as I'm with you. Things happen to you. New things, new questions, new issues, new problems. And I have the solution for you. From Allah Azza wa Jal. Wouldn't we wish he were here? Now! These years, these centuries, wouldn't we wish? Yes. Oh, Ya Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, what is the answer? Allah, nobody stays forever but his spirit stays and my dying is good for you my dying is good for you why ya rasulullah tu'aradu alayya a'malukum your deeds are exposed to me in that realm 
in that life of the beyond, our deeds, your deeds, brothers and sisters, Ya Ummata Muhammad, O Ummah of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your deeds, he knows. Allah makes them, makes him know. As you all know, your Salatu Alayhi, as Salatu Alayhi, Ma'rubatun Alayhi, Salatukum Alayhi, Ma'rubatun Alayhi, Haba Ta'rifuna. This you know, and that's enough for you to know. That when you send Salah upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he knows, and you all know that, or most of you know that. Now more general, your deeds, all your deeds, and your Salah Alayhi is a deed. All your deeds, moral and immoral, economic and political and financial and social and family and spiritual and personal and collective and in secret and in privacy and in public. تُعْرَضُ عَلَيَّ أَعْمَالُكُمْ And as nations, and as individuals, and as groups, Allah Azza wa Jal's qudra. You know now a chip, you put in a chip, billions and trillions perhaps, of information, pieces of information, that little thing, you can't even, can barely see it. And it processes it, each at its own time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam know what we do. If that which is exposed to me I find is good, I thank Allah for you. وَإِنْ كَانَ شَرًّا But if that which I'm exposed to of your deeds is evil, is evil, اسْتَغْفَرْتُ اللَّهَ لَكُمْ Allahu Akbar I ask Allah to forgive you the merciful love, the loving mercy to the world's not only the worlds of humans and jinns and plants and animals in this life, but the worlds even of the afterlife, as Allah made him to be. Allahumma inna nas'aluka hubbak, wa hubba nabiyika sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa hubba anbiyaika wa rusulik, wa hubba awliyaik, wa hubba malaikatik, wa hubba salihina min ibadik, wa hubba man yuhibbuk, wa hubba man yanfa'una hubbuhu indak. Allahumma tahir qulubana mimma siwak. اللهم أقمنا بصدق العبودية بين يديك اللهم أعف عنا وعافنا ولا تخزن بينا بنا وبأعمالنا يا رب العالمين اللهم شفعه فينا اللهم شفعه فينا اللهم شفعه فينا اليوم وغدا ويوم القيامة يا رب العالمين وفي كل حين بجودك وبكرمك وبرحمتك المهداة يا أكرم الأكرمين يا رب العالمين اللهم طهر قلوبنا من كل داء اللهم زين قلوبنا لك واليوم الأرض عليك اللهم ارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا اللهم فرج كروبنا وآمن روعاتنا واستر عوراتنا وأصلح ذات بيننا وردنا إليك ردا جميلا يا أكرم الأكرمين يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نجعل اجعلك في نحور الظالمين والصادين عن سبيلك في كل مكان واجعلنا هادين مهديين غير ضالين ولا مضلين لا مبدلين ولا مغيرين يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين واجعل خير أيامنا وأسعدها يوم ملقاك عباد الله قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله